Oh, welcome to CP Time, the only show that's for the culture. Today, we'll be discussing black contributions to fashion. Normally, when we think about black fashion, we think about church hats so big, they block your view of Jesus. Or we think about those suits that Steve Harvey wears that hog all the buttons. Leave some buttons for the rest of us, Steve. They're keeping my clothes together with staples. But in actuality, the world of fashion has been filled with influential and iconic African-American designers. Like our first trailblazer, Zelda Wynn Valdez, who was one of the first designers whose clothing accentuated women's curves. Before her, women's fashion covered up their figures with big-ass skirts the size of a carnival cruise ship. <laughs> Women would get lost just bending over to tie their shoes. <laughs> Zelda's curve flaunting designs were so popular that Hugh Hefner asked her to design the iconic outfit for the Playboy bunnies. I never went to the Playboy mansion myself because I was married and I also have a severe phobia of rabbits. You never know where rabbits are hiding. If you can pull one out of a hat, you can pull one out of anywhere. Kiss my ass, I don't want to be around that. <laughs> Another black creator of couture is Stephen Burroughs. He rose to fashion prominence in the early 70s during the disco era. I was always confused by disco. I couldn't tell who was dancing and who was giving me directions. <laughs> but disco isn't just about the moves. It's about the fashion, which Stephen Burroughs helped shape. He hung out at Studio 54 and was popular among its celebrity regulars. He was the first to design clothes that were comfortable on the dance floor, even at 3 a.m., right when the cocaine hit so hard you thought you were the disco ball. <laughs> cocaine was better in the 70s. <laughs> Burroughs also invented lettucing, which is when you make the material at the edge of a garment curve and ripple, like a piece of lettuce. I'll have to take his word for it, because I've never eaten a piece of lettuce. My favorite vegetable is caramel-covered popcorn. <laughs> and finally, our last designer brings us to the modern day. Virgil Abloh, the first African-American artistic director at Louis Vuitton and driving force behind this decade's streetwear movement. He made high-end fashion take streetwear seriously. You know, fancy logos, T-shirts, chunky sneakers, hoodies, pretty much anything you're not supposed to wear to a funeral unless you and the deceased had beef. Rest in peace, Spencer. Miss Jordan's a stepping on your grave. Now, don't be fooled by the term streetwear. One of Abloh's biggest companies, Off-White, sells sweatpants for over $300, and this luxury undershirt costs $200. Although I don't know why you would spend so much money on a shirt that ain't nobody gonna see. You know how much I paid for my underwear? Nothing. A six-pack of drawers fell off the back of a Walmart truck in 1987, and I never looked back. So the next time you zip your fly, and you're looking fly, remember the African-American fashion trailblazers who made you that blazer. Now, if you'd excuse me, I'm gonna make my first shirt. Retail price, $10,000. <laughs> this old man has his debts. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Roy Wood Jr. This has been CP Time, and remember, for the culture. Make me some, oh, damn. Somebody give me a napkin, I'm bleeding on my fabric. <laughs>